Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're all back this week for the first time in almost a year. A day students, meet B day students, B day, meet A day. A uh, few reminders. I know it's a, a little bit of a change for you. You're going to feel tired the first couple of weeks, but uh, we will all get used to it soon enough. Uh, remember, when you come in the buildings in the morning, you need to have a mask on and the mask needs to stay on your face all day long. Uh, we, we're not letting you gather in the commons and so please don't go to other parts of the building to gather like the stairwells or anywhere else you just need to head on to first period. Uh, also in the cafeteria keep your masks on until you sit down to eat lunch and really you should be keeping them on uh, during class as well. Uh, I've, I've watched and seen that we're having a little struggle with getting to places on time so make sure uh, you are speedy on your feet. You're getting where you're supposed to be before the bell rings. I am excited everybody is here. Uh, it feels a lot more like real school. We have stuff to do. Let's get it done um, and have a little fun while doing it. This week on Thursday, which is tomorrow, uh, we will be having a freshman class meeting at the end of first block or fifth block and a senior class meeting at the begin, beginning of the second block that meets, which is our six block class. Uh, so enjoy these block days. Uh, hopefully you get your hands dirty a little bit, do some hands-on learning. And I'm gonna try to uh, get on the news and give you a few updates every week uh, so you see my face a little more often, which I know you're all excited about. Have a good day, everybody. Welcome back to Five Days a Week, everyone. This is your Blue Devil News. I'm Luke. And I'm Logan. Let's get into it. See, what was that? <laughs> I said let's get into oh. it. Seniors, we have some important information, so listen up. Graduation is on May 29th at Lemscombe University. Your senior fee of $75 is due March 5th. This includes your cap, gown, diploma, and cover, and other costs with graduation. Go to the LHS website to pay. The Tennessee Promise has extended the FAFSA deadline to March 1st, and they are offering webinars for the eight hours of required community service due to COVID. We want to make sure you are aware just how important FAFSA is to you. Take a look at this short clip. If you're interested in financial aid for college or career school, you're going to need to fill out the free application for federal student aid, or FAFSA. It takes most people about 30 minutes to complete online, and the best part, it's 100% free. And it provides you with access to grants, loans, and work-study funds from the federal government. And many colleges and states use FAFSA information to provide their own college or state financial aid. Before you fill out the FAFSA, it's a good idea to create your FSA ID, a username and password that lets you electronically sign your FAFSA and gives you access to various websites related to federal student aid. And here's an important tip. If your parent is providing information on your FAFSA, he or she will need his or her own FSA ID. Visit studentaid.gov forward slash FSA ID for more information. Your FAFSA can be completed online at FAFSA.gov and help is provided throughout the online application process. You will need to fill out the FAFSA each year you are in school because your financial situation may change. Plus, you may be able to automatically transfer your tax data from the IRS, making the application even quicker to fill out. Each state and college or career school sets its own deadline for the FAFSA, so it's best to get it done early. Since some of the funds are available on a first-come, first-served basis, you don't want to miss out. Now that you know about the FAFSA, you might be asking, well, how much money will I get? Your college or career school will do the math, and there's a simple formula that they use. First, the college takes your cost of attendance, which is the total amount it will cost you to go to that school. Your cost of attendance will vary from school to school. Then, the college subtracts your expected family contribution, or EFC. Your EFC is based on information provided in your FAFSA and will not change based on the school you attend. However, the EFC is not necessarily the amount of money you will have to pay. Basically, your cost of attendance minus your EFC equals your financial need. 
Your college uses your financial need and other information to determine how much financial aid you can receive. See? Pretty simple. If you have questions or need more information, please visit studentaid.gov. The LHS FAFSA Frenzy has been rescheduled for tomorrow from 12 to 4 in the library. Sign-ups are required and families can reserve a time at Genius.com. Prom is May 7th on the soccer field and it will be a night to remember. Tickets are currently $40 if purchased before March 26th and $50 after that. Tickets will not be sold after April 23rd. You may purchase them at the bank or online. Yearbooks are still on sale for $90. Pre-orders have ended, so we are currently selling remaining stock and do not anticipate having extras. We sold out last year and expect to do so this year. Orders can be placed using school cash or on yearbookforever.com. FCA will be tomorrow morning at 7.30 in the auditorium. Larry Davis, the youth pastor at the Journey Church, will be our guest speaker. Cumberland Dual Enrollment Interest Meeting will be on March 18th at 6 p.m. There will be a student council meeting after school in the library tomorrow after school. GSA will meet on Tuesday, March 2nd after school in Ms. Robertson's room in B213. Any culinary arts student wishing to participate in the Pro Start competition, please see Ms. Morgan in room A801 before the end of the week. On March 3rd, 2021, culinary students will compete in our annual pasta competition here at LHS against Wilson Central in Green Hill High School. This event is open for teachers, students, and parents. So come on out and share your favorite chefs. The cooking starts at 5.30. You must have a parking pass to park on campus. If you do not have one, there are applications outside of the bank and you may purchase a pass during lunch. If you have lost your pass, replacement passes are $5 and also available at the bank during lunch. Please make sure you hang your tag properly displayed and visible on your mirror to be sure you are in the correct spot that coordinates with your hang tag. Due to COVID restrictions, the hardworking yearbook staff is having a hard time collecting content. Please send any pictures of the school year to LHS at souvenir at gmail.com or upload to yearbookforever.com or you can email BDN and we will make sure that the staff gets it. The ACT is quickly approaching and we will take place after spring break on Tuesday, March 16th. Here's some test taking ACT math tips. Hello and welcome to Hear Tutoring. In this video, we're going to talk about when and how to use the answer choices for the ACT math test. First, let's just make sure we say that we are allowed to use the answer choices. The ACT math test is not like a normal math test where we need to start from the beginning and work to the end, showing all of our work. In fact, we shouldn't do that because our goal isn't to show anyone that we know how to do the question. Rather, our goal for the ACT math test is simply to get the right answer as quickly as possible, using whatever method necessary. And sometimes, the best method to get the right answer is to just use the answer choices and plug them back into the question even if we know how to do the questions the right way. This is because sometimes the right way to do the question will actually take a lot longer than just using the answer choice. Now, let's talk about how and when to use the answer choices. Regarding the how, the most efficient way to use the answer choices is to start with C, since it will always be the choice that's right in the middle. If C ends up being wrong, then we only need to pick one more choice to find the right answer. If C ends up being too big, then we know the answer needs to be either A or B, then we just need to pick either A or B to plug in. If it's right, then great. If it's wrong, then we know the answer is the other one. Likewise, if C ends up being too small, then we know the answer will be either D or E, so we pick one of them to plug in. If it's right, great. If it's wrong, then we know the answer is the other one. On the other hand, if we just started with choice A and worked forwards, we might need to try four different choices if the answer is E, instead of just two using this method where we start with C. Now, let's try this with two examples. First, let's take a look at this question. If 2n plus 1 squared minus n minus 5 squared equals 16, then what could be a value of n? Our choices are 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. For this question, we should recognize that it would take quite a while to foil out the entire problem and find the roots, so this will be a perfect question to use the answer choices for. So let's start by trying choice C, which is 4. When we plug 4 in, 
we end up getting 9 squared minus negative 1 squared equals 16, which simplifies to 81 minus 1 equals 16, which is 80 equals 16, which doesn't work. We say that 80 is too big, so let's try one of the smaller choices. Let's try A by plugging 1 back into the original equation. When we do this, we end up getting 3 squared minus negative 4 squared equals 16, which simplifies to 9 minus 16 equals 16, which simplifies to negative 7 equals 16, which doesn't work either. So now we know the answer needs to be between A and C, or between 1 and 4, so we can just pick B at this point and move on. But if we wanted to check this, we would see that plugging 2 back into the equation gets us 5 squared minus negative 3 squared equals 16, which simplifies to 25 minus 9 equals 16, which simplifies to 16 equals 16. With this method of using the answers, we will only need to try at most two of the answer choices. Whereas if we started from the beginning, we might need to try up to four choices. Now, if we wanted to actually set this question up and solve it, we would have had to distribute or foil out everything, combine all the like terms, get everything to one side so they equal zero, and then find the roots. Probably using the quadratic formula, which would have taken a lot longer. Using the answer choices was a much better option for this question. Now, let's try one more example together. Let's take a look at this question. In a bag of marbles, one-third of the marbles are red, one-fourth of the marbles are blue, one-sixth of the marbles are green, and 21 marbles are yellow. How many total marbles are in the bag? Our choices are 48, 60, 72, 84, and 96. Like with the last question, we can figure out pretty quickly that this question will take a while to set up and solve, and that using the answer choices will probably be quicker and easier. So here's how we could use the answer choices. Let's start with C, which is 72. If there are 72 marbles in the bag, then one-third, or 24, are red, one-fourth, or 18, are blue, one-sixth, or 12, are green, and 21 are yellow. This adds up to 75 marbles, which is higher than 72, so we know that 72 is too small, which means we should try D or E for our next answer choice to use. Let's try D, or 84. If there are 84 total marbles in the bag, then 1 3rd or 28 are red, 1 4th or 21 are blue, 1 6th or 14 are green, and 21 are yellow. This adds up to 84, which is what we were aiming for, so our answer is D. As you can see, if we had started from A and moved forward, we would have needed to try three answer choices instead of just two. If we had wanted to set up and solve an equation for this question, we would have done 1 3rd x plus 1 4th x plus 1 6th x plus 21 equals x, then we would have changed the fractions to common denominators to get 4 over 12x plus 3 over 12x plus 2 over 12x plus 21 equals x. Then we would have combined the like terms to get 9 over 12x plus 21 equals x, which simplifies to 3 over 4x plus 21 equals x. Then we subtract 3 over 4x from both sides to get 21 equals 1 over 4x. And finally, we multiply both sides by 4 to get x equals 84, which is our answer, but that took a lot longer than just using the answer choices. So, the two examples that we just went through help give us an idea of what kinds of questions would be good candidates for using the answer choices. Generally speaking, the questions that we want to consider using this method for are ones where setting up and solving the algebraic equation would take longer than just plugging in the answer choices. In the next video, we're going to talk about an ACT math strategy similar to this one, which is substituting in random, easy numbers into the question to figure out the answer. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon. The softball team is having a grab-and-go pancake breakfast at March 13th from 8 to 10 at Emmanuel Baptist Church. Tickets are $5, and you can buy your tickets now from any softball player, or you can email Coach Atwood. Great job to the swim team at their meet, who finished with nine personal bests and eight region cuts and eight state cuts. Last night, our boys' basketball team traveled to Beach High School for the district tournament. Even though our guys started out strong, they ended up falling short in the end, and they will face Stage Camp High School tonight at 7 p.m. Win or lose tonight, we still play in the regional tournament this Saturday. More information coming soon. The Lady Devilettes defeated new rivals Green Hill High School. Green Hill tried to slow the tempo of the game to a snail's pace as they would hold the ball for up to a minute on each possession. The Devilettes stayed locked and defensively held the Lady Hawks, two leading scores over a total of 10 points. The Devilettes will play to host Beach tonight in the District 9 AAA Championship tonight at Campbell Brandon Gymnasium. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. Coach Barrett has said that the Devils layer needs to come out in full force tonight and be our sixth man, and the theme is Jersey tonight. You can buy tickets for both games at GoFan.com.
Well, that's all the news we have for today, Light Chess. I'm Luke. And I'm Logan. And this has been news to you from, from the, the White and Blue. Blue.